I put out this video to describe the 19-day government, or sort of the rump state of Nazi Germany, but I am interested in the sort of conspiracy that a lot of Nazi elites went underground and began collaborating and slowly infiltrating political parties through the years. In this sense, we can kind of argue that the Nazi government never truly died. And the story of Hermann Ramke is very interesting because it factors into a lot of this. Ramke was arrested before the end of the war in September 1944, but it's mainly his life after release that I'm more interested in. But I'll describe the situation that led to his arrest. Ramke was arrested by Americans after the Battle for Brest in 1944. The Americans marched into Brittany and found Fortress Brest, commanded by Ramke, the head of the paratroopers, who had the highest rank in the German military. He was a paratrooper veteran, like his brother, who died in the last few days of the fighting in Berlin. He was also a veteran of Rommel's Africa Corps and commanded 40,000 elite fighters. The battle, naturally, was very rough, and Americans from the 8th Corps found they were fighting Baltram Jager, as well as Kriegsmarine and, oddly enough, survivors of U-boat sinkings who simply swam to shore. They were also fighting disbanded Luftwaffe divisions, who were now doing on-the-ground fighting. Naturally, this wouldn't normally happen, but the German army had totally broken down. And smaller German units and individuals who were unable to find commanding officers were quick to surrender, but Ramke's paratroopers held out to the last. Americans suffered heavy losses every time they moved an inch into the city, and house-to-house -house fighting needed to be employed. In fact, Paris surrendered before Brest, but eventually Ramke did turn himself in. The arrest is still a legendary moment in the U.S. 8th Infantry Division. Brigadier General Charles Canham arrived to accept the surrender of Ramke, to which Ramke asked for the Americans' credentials. Charles pointed to the troops on either side of him and said, quote, These are my credentials. And this has since become the motto of the 8th Infantry, which they use today. And as soon as we arrested Ramke, it became clear that we caught a bigwig. He was one of only 27 Germans to receive the Ninth Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds. He was also an unrepentant Nazi, even after the war, and his troops were known to have committed war crimes in Crete when he ordered his men to kill civilians. In 1951, he was convicted for war crimes committed against French people in Brest, and he was released after only three months of a six-month sentence, later to become a central figure in the white power and fascist groups emerging in the German underground. During his interrogation, he claimed Germany was, quote, a clean, innocent nation greatly wronged by other nations, and that once released, he would help her rise again. After he was released halfway through his sentence in France, he went to work for extreme right-wing movements in Germany, starting with Norman Kreis. This is where he tried setting up the first Nazi shadow government. In effect, it pretty much worked. But understand that Thomas Daler was Free Germany's first Minister of Justice and the chairman for a political party called the Free Democratic Party. This party was seen by many as an easy target for infiltration. Werner Neumann, an aide to Joseph Goebbels and other high-ranking Nazis, conspired to infiltrate the FDP. The plan was to incorporate fascist elements and gradually turn it national socialist. Conspirators in this plot were even arrested by British authorities in January of 1953 for plotting a coup to essentially bring back the Nazi form of government. And this, and this coup was naturally participated in by Ramke, who had a vested interest in seeing fascism return to Germany. He became a figurehead for Haig, an organization specifically for veterans of the Waffen-SS. Many historians believe groups like Haig smuggled war criminals out of Germany to act as advisors abroad in Syria, Egypt, South America, and all over the world. Haig was even present at his funeral in 1968, along with dozens of other Nazi war veterans. Understand that his infiltration of mainstream German political parties speaks volumes to the fact that a lot of these guys actually acted in German intelligence. And also understand that he was not really arrested for this, and nothing ever happened to him. Obviously, the German Minister of Justice was encouraged by the first German president to come down on him and anticipate arresting him, but nothing ever happened. And this kind of really talks to the fact that he probably had friends in high places. 